Karen Swizek is the founder and owner of Making the Bacon. It began as a blog in 2012. She has partnered with brands such as Meridian Credit Union, Minted.com, Camtech, and Supperworks for influencer marketing campaigns. In 2017, Making the Bacon evolved into a consulting, auditing, training services company for blogging, WordPress, and social media. She has facilitated numerous business blogging strategy workshops within the greater Toronto area. Karen is also a part-time instructor at Sheridan College for their Blogging for Fun and Profit course and their Effective Strategies for Social Media courses. In her spare time, she enjoys reading and teaching group fitness classes several times a week. So welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? Just want to make sure, because I actually have a, a soft-spoken voice, but I will try to project. So uh, thank you so much for choosing to attend my talk, How Starting a Blog Changed My Life. So I know it kind of sounds like a cheesy after-school special, but really it has changed my life a couple times for the better, and it may not necessarily be what you think. So just to kind of give you a little bit of foreshadowing, it's very different from what you might expect. I'm not a full-time blogger, so I'm not like a social media influencer or anything like that. So without further ado, let's get started. So if you haven't searched me online, you're probably wondering, who am I? Who is this person? And why is she speaking at WordCamp? So I'd like to share with you who I was before I started blogging. So I have a degree in biochemistry from the University of Waterloo. I've gone through multiple jobs, multiple careers, so pretty much anything from project management to uh, personal training. I even did a brief stint working in retail. I've applied to grad school twice. At one point, I thought I wanted to be a physiotherapist. And then at another point, I thought I wanted to do a master's in food science, but I actually didn't end up um, doing either of those things. So just to let you know, I'm not even using my degree. I consider it to be an expensive piece of artwork hanging in my parents' <laughs> living room. So I've been unemployed several times. Rather than you know, having a job set up for, for the next little bit, I usually spent the time being unemployed just trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. So during that time, which spanned over almost 10 years, I was very confused, frustrated, and lost. I didn't know what I was doing. And it felt like everyone around me, my peers, my friends and family, they were kind of on this upward trajectory. So their lives were getting into place. They were getting promoted in their jobs. Whereas I felt nothing that I did was working out according to plan. So I felt I had started um, over several times. And I always like to tell people that instead of climbing the corporate ladder, I feel that my career is more like a rock climbing wall. So if anybody has actually tried I have 30 years and collected their pension, and it's all good. And so initially, I thought it was good, but I eventually fell back into the same pattern of being lost, uh, frustrated, and confused. So why I actually started blogging was because I was looking for ways to uh, help fund my wedding. Like, so I was searching you know, how to make um, money, and uh, starting a blog was actually one of the results. So it really wasn't actually to start writing, which is more like, how can I make uh, some money? However, um, so I started a personal finance blog called Making the Bacon, and a lot of the times I get asked, well, how did you come up with that name? And to be honest, I have no idea. I don't, I don't even remember, but all I knew was that I liked the name. It stuck, and it was fun, and yeah. So I started it in 2012, and I felt that there was a need for more people to discuss the importance of creating multiple streams of income, saving for a rainy day, because a lot of the conversations I was having with people was that they seemed either very afraid of money, they didn't want to talk about money, or they seed, or excuse me, they saw money as being a bad thing, which in fact um, we know is not. It can be used as a tool and help can help provide freedom and flexibility. So, what actually ended up happening was that I didn't make um, money right away, but it ended up being a really fun hobby. So I really enjoyed blogging. And I found that I was able to develop some new skills. And it became a creative outlet to help tolerate a job that was very boring and repetitive. So I had a creative childhood. 
Growing up, I was very creative. I wrote a lot of poems and stories, did all those things like to doodle and draw and do lettering. However, I was never encouraged to take these things seriously. I also did well in English class. And then my OSC English teacher assumed that I was going to pursue a degree in writing or something related. However, I was led to believe that pursuing a degree in science, engineering, medicine would provide better career opportunities. So I was on that, that path where, you know, go to get good grades, go to school, get a good job, and, and you're set for life. So even though I mentioned I uh, have a biochemistry degree, I actually enrolled in engineering first. So I didn't do so well in engineering, and it was basically a combination of being away from home for the first time, not getting along with my roommate, um, having a crazy workload, and having trouble making friends. So it was just kind of this really massive, big stress ball. Um, and then, so after not doing so well in engineering, I kind of felt like in a panic. And to add more fuel to the fire, my parents were panicking for me. So I distinctly remember my mom saying like, what are you gonna do, what are you gonna do? And then I'm like, I don't know. It's like, what are you gonna do? I'm like, I don't know, I'll go into science. So really, it was just kind of um, a panic going into science. And in hindsight, when I think about it, I probably should have you know, just taken some time off of school or even earlier than that, probably have taken a gap year between high school and engineering because I feel at such a young age it's really hard to figure out what you want to do right we know especially in university it's a lot about the theory I mean even though I did a co-op program you know I had some experience working in the lab I still felt it wasn't the same and it wasn't until I was actually in the real world you know um, going through several jobs that I realized what I wanted to do and then what I didn't want to do so all I knew was that I didn't want to do any research <laughs> so the blog brought back creativity into my life. So as I had mentioned earlier, as a kid, I liked to write poems and stories, and I found that blog re rekindling my love for writing. And so many years had passed where I was not really doing anything creative. And blogging was a way for me to express my thoughts and feelings. And then I'm also uh, an introvert, so I feel I'm better at expressing myself through the written word versus speaking. So blogging is not just about the writing. I found I had developed a lot of skills, so I was continuously improving my communication skills. I was using social media to network and market my blog and business. And when you think about it, your blog can eventually become a business where you can be presented with business opportunities. So you're thinking about things such as um, negotiating rates, what are the terms of how you're gonna get paid, like uh, signing contracts. So I did a lot of networking online, learned how to develop an online presence, how to build the brand. And as I mentioned, it felt like I was running a side business. I learned about creating and managing content. And I guess one of the most important skills since we're at WordCamp was learned how to use WordPress. And it was quite interesting back in 2012. So I just threw it out there, asked people, what can I use to blog? Like, how would I start a blog? And really, the unanimous uh, answer was WordPress. I don't even recall anybody mentioning um, Squarespace or Wix uh, at the time. And maybe they, uh, to be honest, I'm not sure whether or not they existed at that time, but maybe they weren't as popular as they are now. So learned a bit about WordPress, um, you know, how to use it as a content management system, learned about what themes are, how to choose a theme, um, plugins, and then what certain plugins you should use. But of course, it wasn't all sunshine and roses. So I made a lot, lot of mistakes. So I'd like to share with you some things that I did wrong or I didn't do right away. So I was actually anonymous for several years, and it was one of those things where I was scared because I was working for the government, but even though I wasn't breaking any rules in their social media policy, and what I was blogging about, personal finance, had nothing to do with uh, working for the government. I worked in food inspection, so as you can see, there were two very different categories. But again, um, I was very afraid that people would, you know, be very critical of my opinion, and they'd be wondering, like, what is she talking about? Why is she talking about this? So even my friends and family, they didn't know about it, except for my sister and boyfriend at the time. So I was anonymous for about, uh, I think, almost four years. 
And then I had really, really ugly stock photos. So this was before I knew about Unsplash. And I wasn't consistent with posting. And when I say when I wasn't consistent, I mean I was not inconsistent. So there would be one week where I'd post one or two times, and then several months would go by, and then I would post again. And though, even though I was on social media, I wasn't even really promoting my uh, content that much. I had this idea that, OK, I published a post. Everyone's going to see it. They're all, they're all going to come when we know that is not necessarily the case when you're starting a blog for the first time. And for another strange reason, I thought I didn't need any help. And I thought I could figure everything out on my own. And we know that's true in a sense, you know, thanks to Google and uh, YouTube. But again, you have to think about what is your time worth to you? Do you want to spend hours upon hours Googling everything? Or do you want to you know, get some of those hours back and just ask somebody to help you? OK, so even more things I did wrong and didn't do right away. So I didn't have um, any kind of focus. I, I claim to be a personal finance blog, but if you were to go back way, way back into my archives, I actually blogged about pretty much anything and everything. Um, there was one post where I blogged about, you know, like Costco, shopping at Costco. And then there was another one where I blogged about travel, I blogged about, um, you know, relationships, I blogged about careers. So it wasn't uh, specifically about personal finance. As I mentioned, wasn't that active on social media right away. And I didn't even do a lot of in-person networking either, which can be very helpful too if you have a blog. And I wish I had a screenshot uh, to show you guys how ugly my first site really was. So um, I'm sure the theme suburbia is completely different now. But back when I first started, uh, it was very ugly. This it kind of reminds me of some like old school wallpaper. It was like yellow and just, just not very pretty. So. Not only that, I really didn't put in the time and the effort. So I was more focused on trying to build a career at my full-time position, which um, kind of makes sense. So I felt like I had too many things on the go. And I really wasn't planning on taking the blog seriously until a few years after working at my full-time job. So it was never a priority. So I just want to talk about how it actually changed my life for the first time. So with my government job, not only it was, was it very boring and repetitive, it was getting to the point where I wanted to quit my job every day. So I'm not sure if anybody you know, has ever had that feeling when they're just basically looking at the clock every hour. So that, that was me. Um, not only that, I actually started my job every day at 6.30 AM. 6.30 AM, so guess what time I woke up? at 5 a.m. So it was just basically me and uh, the truck drivers on, on the road. And during my time there, I felt like I had not gained any new skills. I was not being challenged. Um, my efforts at the government agency, they were not paying off. So what I tried to do was I joined uh, like health and safety committees. I joined a career committee for young employees of the government. I even created and facilitated a workshop. I had numerous interviews with upper management, and I did a lot of job shadowing to figure out what I wanted to do. So when I realized uh, nothing was changing despite my efforts, I decided to make a couple of decisions that I would put more effort into building the blog. So as I mentioned, you know, not being consistent, I, I quit. If I could, if I had a dollar for every time I quit the blog, I probably would have had you know, a good uh, <laughs> lump sum in my bank account now because I had actually quit the blog a numerous amount of times. And then in 2015, I made the conscious decision, actually kind of uh, flipping the switch and deciding I'm going to actually put effort into this. I'm going to you know, almost treat it as a part-time job, like schedule time on evenings and weekends, even during my lunch break, to do whatever I can to work on, on the blog. And then I made another decision to leave the government agency entirely. So through WordPress, I discovered HTML and CSS. And then at one point, I thought I wanted to be a web designer or a web developer. So I took some workshops and a part-time intro to web development course. And 
there was even like one point where I was actually dropping um, between eight to 10K for those, you know, six to eight week developer boot camps. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna be a coder. But then I decided uh, that that wasn't the path, path for me. I still ended up going to startup and tech related networking events just because I was really fascinated by the culture and I just wanted to be um, a part of it. But I found it actually difficult to network and maybe it was because I wasn't portraying myself as someone you know, who had started a blog and had all these skills, but more so as someone who was a government worker and telling everybody, I just want to get out of the government. So I used those skills that I had gained from the blog and actually put them onto my resume and then applied to startups. So not necessarily for um, coding jobs, but for things that were um, related to the startup, so such as community management, um, product, management and things like that. And then finally, after applying for, how, I, don't, I can't remember how many jobs, I was offered a job as a business analyst at a startup in Toronto. And this was such a turning point because I still remember that specific moment when I called my husband and I found out, I told him I had got the job because for the first time in a very long time, I was crying, but it was not out of frustration or depression, but it was actually more tears out of happiness. And of course, I took it because I was hungry for challenge, I was hungry for the change. I was well aware that I was leaving a steady job with pension, with benefits, a lot of vacation. And of course, I was met with a lot of criticism from my colleagues. So people were saying like, oh, it was too risky, we were still in a recession. But again, these were people who were uh, risk adverse and they had been with the government for 20, 25 years. So really for them, um, it was easy street. So they only had to work a few more years and then they could collect their pension. Whereas me, I was in a different boat. I still had another 25 to 30 years and I couldn't even imagine myself staying there for another two years. So not only leaving that steady job, I took a huge pay cut, but eventually I made significantly more than my government job. So it's interesting to note that at the government, I was one of the youngest employees. But when I joined the startup, I was one of the oldest employees. So the CEO was 24 years old, so it was just trying to Interesting to think, you know, what was I doing with my life when I was 24 years old? Definitely not running a company. So at my position, I had to learn on the fly. I was constantly thrown into the fire. Every day, it felt like it was something new, often a challenge. And it was an insane learning curve. So this was a business analyst job. So um, being on the tech team, but and then also um, communicating to, to the business team as well. So I, I had multiple hats. In addition to being that liaison, I was responsible for um, purchasing, purchasing servers, setting up servers, maintaining the servers, um, trying to you know, keep that uptime of 100%. And it was just crazy to think, you know, having a degree in biochemistry and you know, no formal tech experience, no experience working at a startup um, and you know, doing what I did there. Okay, so the blog actually ended up changing my life a second time. So unfortunately we got acquired by a larger company and I was let go in the beginning of 2017. So there was that brief period of time where I looked at nine to five jobs and then I thought, oh, okay, now I'm, I'm more marketable. I have a set of new skills. Why don't I just look for another nine to five job? And you know, the, the thought was, you know, I'll have a steady paycheck and I'll just continue to work on my blog on the side. So instead, I decided to dedicate the majority of my time to the blog and use it as an online resource. So based on the skills learned from blogging, I decided to uh, create a consulting business. So while I was working the startup, I was kind of already in the process of trying to figure out how I wanted to create a business from it. So it's funny because instead of telling people that uh, I took the leap, because you always hear people saying, you know, I, I took a leap, I left my full-time job. Me, I just like to say, you know, I had a bit of a head start, so I was like pushed. <laughs> so as of right now, I teach and advise small business owners on using blogging and social media for their business. But of course, again, not all sunshine and roses because we know it never is. So again, I was met with a lot of doubt and criticism, especially from my family, because 
they weren't even sure. And there was this misconception that you know blogging was still a hobby. It was only meant for millennials. You just sit around your pajamas all day blogging. So all these these crazy ideas and like who uses the blog and. I think before I explained it to my parents, they were like, what's a blog or um, what are you doing? And also for transparency's sake, you know, I was not one of those bloggers who was making um, a full-time income or anywhere close to that. And another thing too, not having uh, a business background, I quickly learned how different and how much more difficult it is to run a business for using your skills. And then even as I started to network and tell people about my consulting business, there were a lot of naysayers out there who um, didn't believe that having an online presence was necessary in this day and age, that you should only network in person. Um, and I believe you know, that doesn't make any sense because the two can work together. Because when you think about it, the people you meet, say, for instance, here, you can stay connected with them on Twitter or on LinkedIn or vice versa. You can ask on Twitter who's attending WordCamp, you know, using that hashtag and then if people answer, you can start a conversation with them prior and then eventually, you know, meet up at the event. So a lot of people didn't believe, you know, again, similar to what my parents said, oh, like, you know, social media, it's, it's only for the millennials, it can't help my business, it, it, it doesn't work. Um, and then I also noticed that many people were charging significantly less to, to write posts, hence devaluing the work, and which is why I decided to focus more on uh, teaching people how to blog instead. And then also, with the growing popularity of video, people think that blogging is dead, which doesn't make sense because when you think about it, people consume content in different ways. Um, they'll listen to podcasts, they'll watch videos, and then when people, people, as far as I know, people still read. So they would look at you know articles on the internet. And I think it really depends on what type of information you're portraying, because some things can be better displayed as a video, whereas some things are probably better displayed as a blog post. Okay, so what happened after that? As mentioned in the um, brief introduction by Kathy, I am an instructor at uh, Sheridan College for their blogging and social media course. And so I also teach blogging workshops within the greater Toronto area. So I've taught them in Oakville and Toronto and in Burlington. I've been a keynote speaker, workshop facilitator, and panel moderator at a conference. I'm going to be the co-author on two books that are publishing in 2020. And then more recently, I signed on to be the lead author on a book project that will be publishing around late 2020, early 2021. So I've talked about my story on a couple of podcasts. And I'll actually be launching a podcast too, just to, to share with you guys next month, hopefully next month. It's called the Bacon Bits and Bites podcast. And of course, now I am a speaker at WordCamp Hamilton, and where I continue to share my story with all of you. So I had attended WordCamp Hamilton about three years ago as an attendee, and I have never imagined I would be speaking at one um, three years later. And in all honesty, based on everything that I've shared with you guys, I never expected I'd be where I am today. I, I honestly thought when I was in the government, I'd be working there for uh, 25, 30 years. And this is kind of based on why I believe that you need to create content, or you should look into creating content and sharing it. So what are the benefits of creating content? And when you think about it, people are constantly consuming content. We crave content. So um, I'm sure pretty much everyone here has a smartphone, and you know, they're either looking at it now, or they've they look at it during their commute, on your lunch break, you're just looking through your social media feeds, just scrolling, reading, reading things, while waiting at the dentist, at the airport. And you never know who is reading, watching, or listening to your content. And when you think about it, they may be waiting for the right time to reach out to you. It can start a conversation and lead to connections or opportunities. So say if you post something online, it can catch the attention of someone, they can start following you, maybe it can lead to an online connection, maybe then even eventually a video call, a phone call, a meeting in person, 
or maybe then a project. So if you forget everything else that I mentioned today, I want you to think about starting that passion project and find something you're passionate about. And I know maybe some of you might be thinking like, oh, okay, well that's easier said than done. How do I find something? Like, I don't know what I'm passionate about. So here are some questions that I think would be good to ask yourself. What do you enjoy doing in your spare time? What did you enjoy doing when you were growing up? And what have you always wanted to try? Why not learn a new skill? So again, thanks to the internet, we can also look into taking courses, webinars, workshops online if you can't make the commitment to attend an in-person workshop. Take up a hobby. Attend conferences, meetups. Now, don't be afraid to make new connections and go for coffee dates. So a couple of apps that I use on my phone for networking is uh, the Shaper app, which I consider it to be like Tinder for, for business. So you know, you're basically just swiping right um, the people who you'd like to have a coffee with. And then also there's another one called Bumble Biz. So I've, I feel I've made a few decent connections through the Shaper app, but um, I've yet to uh, connect with somebody through, through Bumble Biz. So think about also tapping into your network. Use your LinkedIn connections. And ask questions, seek answers. So how else can you discover your passion? Reading books, reading blogs. What about bullet journaling? You know, writing down ideas, just jotting down things. What are your goals? Listening to podcasts audiobooks, or if you prefer to watch things, why not check out some TED Talks or YouTube videos? So I'd like to share a few of my recommendations. So some books I've enjoyed reading, uh, The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan, Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss, there's a lot of great interviews uh, with famous people, high achievers, blogs such as Pro Blogger, Seagull Work, there, those first two blogs are mainly like blogs about blogging, digital marketing, um, online, online income. And the last one, Give Me Back My Five Bucks, was actually the first blog I came across when I was searching how to make money online at the time. So um, yeah, she's a blogger based in um, Vancouver where she just blogs, uh, shares about like her income, um, investing advice, and, and things like that. Which one was that story? Uh, the the um, personal finance one? Uh, the one you're just talking about. Oh yeah, give me back my five bucks. Oh, okay. nice. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. It's it's not too um, it's not like um, you know has a lot of heavy jargon with investing. It's just very you know down to earth, easy stuff. You know what you can do to save money. Um, basic steps if you want to start investing on your own. Um, so going back to writing, um, if you're interested in bullet journaling, and I just recently started bullet journaling because um, I found I had I had too many notebooks. I had like an actual notebook for notes on books. So it was kind of like getting to the point where I couldn't remember which book I had that note, but having it in one master book, it definitely helps. So if you're interested in that, trying the bullet journal by Ryder Carroll, um, productivity planner, and then some podcasts as well. So the first one has to do with more money mindset. The second one has to do with where uh, Reid Hoffman, the founder of uh, LinkedIn, he interviews people who have successfully scaled their business. So the interview with the founder of B Airbnb, um, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook. And then if you like TED Talks, um, to be honest, I don't really watch TED Talks. This is the only one. But this one's an interesting one, why some of us don't have one true calling. This is um, the speaker. She talks about multi-potentialites. So it's basically how a lot of people don't have just one thing. Um, they don't do one thing for the rest of their lives, but how they combine several interests together. So I want to talk about the benefits of being creative. It gives you time and space to think, helps to de-stress, and reduce anxiety. So a quote, unused creativity is not benign. It metastasizes. It turns into grief, rage, judgment, sorrow, and shame. We are creative beings. 
we are by nature creative. And so why creativity is necessary? And here are some facts that I found while doing some research. It's the single most important skill in the world. It's say it's the number one factor for future success. And it's related to nine of the top 10 skills the global executive say is essential for 2020 and beyond. So create something and share it. Just write something and share it online. Or if you want to create something, take a picture of it and share it. And of course, thanks to the internet, it can reach a wider amount of people online. So don't be afraid to share your creation with the world. So it's OK if it's not perfect. Done is better than perfect. So putting out the first version, it may not be the best, but you know if you keep on doing it, you will get better. Because also, when you think about it, if you don't share anything, how will people know it exists? So where you can share? Obviously, on social media. Behance is an online platform where you can showcase and discover work. So if you like to write Medium or a LinkedIn publishing platform, hit record. So this platform was actually founded by Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Um, if anybody's familiar from Third Rock from the Sun, I think it's also in Inception. Um, it's, so it's an online community where basically you can um, post projects that you have and find people to collaborate on art and media projects together. So the focus isn't necessarily just like promote your own work, but it's really more to like find people to work with. So say if you're looking for somebody, I need help publishing a book, I need help um, creating a film. So we share thoughts and ideas. I mean, think about it, we are a sharing economy. So people will share things that they find to be useful. Um, and then they also share things that they think will be useful to other people. Oops, did I miss one? Sorry. OK, so we're a sharing economy. We've all known like Uber, Airbnb, and then crowdfunding, co-working spaces, um, TaskRabbit. And when you think about it, that passion project could eventually be a source of income. And then it can lead to multiple sources of income. So ads on site isn't the only way. Connecting with other people through your content. And again, as I mentioned before, it can lead to partnerships and collaborations. So think about your online income streams, creating a store, resources, courses, affiliate marketing. Or you have a skill you want to teach. This is what, I'm, what I've been doing, is consulting services, creating workshops, um, pitching yourself to have paid speaking opportunities. So um, the thought possibilities are endless. So it actually is possible to do something you love and get paid for it. So I'm not going to um, sugarcoat it. It does take a significant amount of persistence, time, and effort. But eventually, it becomes worth it. And of course, don't believe the overnight success hype you see on social media. So don't compare your chapter one to somebody's chapter 21. So some key takeaways. Try and figure out what you're passionate about. Ask questions. Stay curious. And start that passion project. Share it. Because you never know what opportunities or people it could lead you to. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes. Hi. Hi. That's a great talk. Well, thank you. Um, so I know and understand and value the blogging experience and, and making sure that not only from in my day job that that's a part of my workflow, uh, but for my personal blog, it's been really hard to make the time to make that a priority. So do you have any recommendations for like creating good habits or uh, workflows of, of maybe setting realistic expectations? Because then I'll, I'll set expectations, but then I won't meet them, and then I kind of beat myself up about it, and I just don't do it. Sure, yeah. So the question is, if um, you know, what are some tips and tricks for, uh, I'm guessing, like maintaining the workflow and creating consistency? So I can totally understand because, um, as I mentioned, I was working for the government and blogging. And then I was actually also teaching group fitness classes while I was doing that. So it felt like I was having three jobs. So what I found is that actually physically scheduling it, whether it was in my Google Calendar or in um, my agenda, just writing down what I wanted to do. And I think 
um, even breaking down because it can sound daunting like oh I have to write this blog post but I think even just breaking it down into little steps saying like oh on Monday I'm gonna brainstorm ideas for the blog maybe later on in the week another step I'm going to start a draft for the blog um, another step could be okay the following week I'm gonna look for some images for the blog so I feel again it's it's like that saying like how do you eat an elephant just taking it one bite at a time. And I think to also, um, don't be so hard on yourself because there actually is a thing called blogger burnout where people, they feel the need, oh, I have to blog five times a week. But when you think about it, you, you're probably overwhelming your reader too. And it's like, oh, she's published five articles. I'm so behind. So I think um, giving yourself some time and space and just being realistic. So if you can only get out one blog post a week, that's fine, one every, every two weeks whatever works best for you. So consistency can be really different for everybody. Just don't be like me and you know, like wait three months and then start blogging again. Any other questions? Yes. Um, wondering about you, your blogging in the financial world versus uh, doing the courses and speaking and whatnot. Where are you seeing your income from more, from the blogging or from the other activities? That's a good question. So the question was, where are you seeing your income? So when I first started, um, blogging and personal finance, it was more so from the blog, so I did a lot of sponsored posts and had brand partnerships. But then when I pivoted and decided my niche was going to be more about blogging and social media, I decided that my um, blog would kind of be more of an educational platform so people would read and then eventually decide you know, if they wanted to uh, work with me or if they wanted to do an audit or if they wanted to do workshops. So as of right now, I've kind of steered away from doing um, sponsored posts and things like that. Anybody else? Yes. Um, so I have, but I have a, a concept in mind that I'm excited about. I work full time, and the thing that is holding me back, I sort of feel like, like it, once I start, I'm worried that I'll get drawn in and have no life left. <laughs> or, or in order to have a life left, I, you know it will be sort of a half-hearted effort. So I, I'm just wondering if you have any comments about that. Okay, so the question is, um, I guess, maintaining blog, blog life balance, which is, is a, a good thing. Um, you know what's interesting? Um, this is just more so my opinion. I, I don't think I can really you know, give you a black and white answer because when I first started, I think because I was so obsessed with the concept and writing, it became my life and I really um, enjoyed it but at the same time too I think it the moment you start to feel burnout it's probably a sign where you need to take a step back because the best way like when you think about it you can't force creativity like if it's not coming out it's not coming out so perhaps you need to like take some time um, away from it and then you know you'll come back feeling feeling refreshed so I think you can balance the two but again it's just one of those things how much effort do you want to put into it because um, unlike some of my colleagues, they had been blogging and also working full time for like six years and now um, they're making a full time income. So they really put in the effort as if they were working two full time jobs. But I decided, you know, I wanted to focus on my career and just kind of leave it as a part time job. So I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, saying if you just kind of want to dip your toe into the water and start off slowly and go from there. Yes? Yes. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. So the question, if I'm um, rewording it properly, is to. Uh, look into, would it be better to look into actually creating the quality content first versus monetizing? Yes, yes, and yes, again, because I think a lot of the times now, I'm, I'm sure if you look on Pinterest, you'll see a ton of blogs posting, you know, how to make money online, how I made $5,000 in a month, like what I did this, how, I, how to make money, how to make money, which is great because I know for a lot of people, eventually that's the goal, but when you think about it, you need to focus on the quality first and building the, the community because there is a lot of bad content out there but at the same time there's also a lot of good and I think you know as a blogger if you're starting a blog you owe it to yourself and the community to provide um, decent content. 
Any other questions? Yes? So what I did mainly, um, to be honest, I didn't, oh sorry, the question was um, how businesses they end up using blogging now to drive traffic to their site and um, how I use SEO to help drive traffic. So for the most part, um, to be honest, when I first started a few years ago, I didn't really know anything about SEO. I was very scared. I'm like, what is this acronym? I, this sounds very scary. I'm going to hold off on it for now. So really how I built my um, traffic was mainly through you know, building community, um, social media, and then also doing a lot of guest posting as well. Because then when you think about it, if you're posting on somebody else's site, you're creating a link and then exposing yourself to new audience and hopefully in turn they will also promote it to their um, website. So I do a little bit of basic on-page SEO, nothing too crazy technical. And I know people stress the importance of keywords, keywords, but then when you also think about it too, you have to look at writing um, quality content as well. So really, at the end of the day, I think it's the quality content it, that's what gets shared. Yes? Google is actually prioritizing quality content more and more now. Um, so the good thing about um, focusing on quality over quantity, the good thing about for us kind of slower writers um, is that Google is getting smarter and smarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So this is more of a great comment, by the way, uh, just talking about how you, the Google al algorithm now focuses on uh, providing readers with a better quality content. Yes? Um, I may have missed this before, uh, but how did you transition into paid speaking? Oh, OK. So just going back into that, so the question is how you transition into paid speaking. I've only actually had one paid speaking opportunity, but I think doing things such as this, uh, you know, applying to speak at conferences, making sure that you can get either photos or video and then posting on your website, um, and another great way, like I have it on my site where I have a page, so basically saying what I can speak about, where I've spoken type thing, and then inviting people to uh, schedule a call with me if they're interested in having me as their speaker. So just putting it out there too. And I think showing some proof if you have it, and if not, then getting the proof. So I think we're, that's all we have for now. Okay, so thank you so much for your questions. Um, of course, I'll, I'll be around, and during lunchtime, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you.